evening, gentlemen, please remove your hats. Uh, we will have Chantel Booker to play the national anthem. myself, 
but even more so, I look forward to seeing how each of you pursue this new adventure. Thank you for the many years of memories and good luck in every path, step, joy, and dream of pursuit. Jayhawks, it's time for us to leave the nest and take flight of our own. Now, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. He started as a manufacturing engineer in 1988. He has held numerous positions at Hamilton Sunstrand for over a decade. He has a space system program manager working in NASA on the space shuttle and international space station programs. He was also director of operations and general manager of Asia programs. Prior to returning to the engineering to support entry into service for the new Boeing 787 Dreamliner 8 aircraft. His educational background includes a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, an MBA, and a doctorate of management degree in organizational leadership. He received certification in manufacturing, engineering, and subsequently spent several years as an instructor for the Society of Manufacturing Engineers Certification Program and was an adjunct instructor at Rock Valley College. He was also recognized by NASA with a leadership award and was later a finalist for the prestigious National Rotary Club Stellar Award for Advancement in Space. He serves as the Rockford's Mayor's Education Basin and is an active member in many local committees and boards. A sample of his involvement includes the Rockford School Board's Education Committee, Dean's Council for the University of Illinois College of Medicine, the Voslatina's Executive Board, Boy Scouts Black Hawk Council Executive Board, TechWords Advisory Committee, and mentor in the RACE program at Jefferson High School. In addition to his volunteer positions, he also serves the community as a frequent speaker on the value of education by associating messages with his experience in the U.S. space program. Since coming to Rockford in 1987, he has presented to over 10,000 students in Northern Illinois. He has been married to his wife, Julia, for over 29 years. They are proud parents of three daughters, all college graduates, that understand the vast opportunities created through life long learning. Ladies and gentlemen, Please help me welcome Dr. Valdez. He doesn't know the struggles, he doesn't know the obstacles that I had to go through just to make it this far. 
And for that, I say, you're right. Except for a couple of you, I don't know about your individual situations, but what I do know is that when I, when I was in the deep fortunate to have a benefit of learning from just about everyone I met, this is a benefit that we all have if we all allow ourselves to consciously learn from each other. I have a short story that I would like to share, and hopefully everyone can take away some words of wisdom that were passed along to me and have served me well. The story begins with a six-year-old boy that lost his father. Also gone was the money he had saved for his family. This was in the fields of a farm in 1935. Shortly afterwards, this little boy who lost his main role model was separated from his mother and had to go to the city to live with his maternal grandmother. He did not have any family on his mother's side because she was an orphan. At his grandmother's house, he worked in exchange for an education. Because of the distance from the fields, his time commitment working in his grandmother's house and working to deliver milk on his bicycle, he could only see his mother periodically. He stayed in the city until he graduated from the age of 17 with a high school degree and a certificate in accounting. Yes, there were high school accountants as far back as the boys. This little boy grew up to be a righteous man with the goal of saving his mother from, from saving his mother from the fields and supporting her and his only sister. He felt that if his convictions were strong enough, he would succeed. In the years he lived in the city, he came he gained knowledge and experience that would benefit him and his family in the future. During those 11 years, he learned from everyone he met. He learned to not fear making mistakes, but he also learned to try to avoid them. Sure, he had a share of disappointments, but he learned from them without losing sight of his goals. There were some that tried to change his thoughts and goals by mocking him uh, based on the condition of the closing room or his inability to participate in functions that required time or money that he just didn't have, or for his desire to study hard, or for his need to talk to others and learn from their experiences. Today, I guess we would call that bullying. A boy that was quickly becoming a man realized that yielding to the bullying or to the naysayers would relinquish control of his life to others. If he was to change his thoughts about his future, it was to be his decision and under his control. Throughout his years away from his mother, he maintained control of his thoughts and goals, knowing that one day he would become the person that he wanted to be. After he graduated and started working in accounting, something wonderful happened. His experiences, learning from others, and his work ethic came together making him successful. What was his definition of success? You know, at that time in his life, it was when he brought his mother and sister back under one roof in the city and away from the fields. But now he had other goals. His goals, he said, as a youth evolved and took his life in a new direction. He spent the next nine years building a profitable accounting business. In 1954, he married his fiance, his best friend of many years. And as in common as is common in life, he was on another, he reached another crossroads. They decided to come to the land of opportunity and give a better life for their future children. Why do I know so much about this man? It's because this man is my father. When I was writing the speech, I called him to ask him questions about his past. I told him that he told me what I needed to know, then thanked me sarcastically for having, me, having him reflect on a painful period in his life. So, sorry, Dan. At the time, the downside at that time, the downside of coming to Chicago from Guadalajara, Mexico, was that jobs were not as global as they are now. They did not have much money because of the cost of transitioning into the United States. And their job options were limited because of their sparse English. So my mom and dad started once again at the poverty level, working multiple jobs to raise a growing family and send money back to Mexico to support his mother and sister. With the help of others, co-workers and others, with the help of neighbors, co-workers, and others, my parents were able to move to a small basement apartment in their own, in own, their own home. Uh, the, small basement, the small basement apartment was really more of a basement than it was an apartment. One of my brothers and I would sleep on the floor, and we would sometimes get rudely awakened by the toilet water from the banged up drain. Uh, we liked that when we moved to a house and away from the floor. 
In reflection, my parents taught their six children quite a bit about setting goals and becoming whatever we thought we could be. My father told us that two of the most important lessons in life, in life are to take care of your education and to take care of family. What I did not realize until later in life was what he meant by taking care of education. And he meant always learn, whether it's in a formal setting or through other people's experiences. What he meant by taking care of family was not just blood relatives, but each other, all of us in the community. After all, we had helped from so many people and in turn we helped others when they were in need. The advice my father gave us was advice that was a compilation of his and many other people's life experiences. The result was that all six children became college graduates. For a couple of his children, it was a goal they created and fulfilled for themselves after working in a career for a few years. I have been very fortunate in the opportunities I've received in life. For example, so far I've been able to earn a doctorate, work with astronauts on the United States Space Program, and have a wife of 30 years, three great daughters, and two grandchildren. Thanks to the advice and learning from the experience of my parents and others, my future continues to look promising. The world is a different place now that, than it was when I graduated from high school. It is more demanding and it's more exciting. We are in a global technological rich era that requires each of you to set your own big goals, believe in them, and make them into a reality. Whether you become a teacher, an artist, an electrician, a social worker, an engineer, a business owner, or any, uh, anything else that you decide to be, you should always remember that you control your own destiny with your thoughts and with your actions. I would like to pass along another piece of advice that augments the subject matter you learned in class. We live in a world where communication is very important. Staying connected is a requirement that expands our options in life. We blog, we tweet, we have smartphones. But we should not lose sight of the reasons we communicate and the lasting impact that we are seeking. People may forget what you said, and at times, they might forget what you did. But people never, ever forget how you make them feel. So what is re uh, really important stays with us forever. Let me close by summarizing the underlying message in my commencement speech with the advice that Mar uh, Margaret Thatcher's parents gave her. Margaret Thatcher was the longest serving British Prime Minister and the only woman to have ever held the position. Her parents told her that what you think is what you become. Watch your thoughts, or they become words. Watch your words, or they become actions. Watch your actions, or they become habits. Watch your habits, or they become character. Watch your character, or it becomes your destiny. What you think is what you become. So think big, think brave, and the future is what you make of it. Go off and fulfill your destinies and make us all proud. Congratulations, Jay Hawks. Thank you, Dr. Valdez. This time the Jefferson Choir will perform A Child of Tomorrow by Mark Patterson.
this time I'd like to introduce the valedictorian of Jefferson High School, Adrian Perez Brown. Remember, 
uh, that everyone else here would also like to hear their son or daughter's name across the stage. So by no means am I saying don't yell, cheer, dance, stomp your feet. By all means, please do that. When your child's name is called, remember, there'll be another student's name called after your child, and their family want to yell, scream, stomp their feet when they hear their child's name. So, without further ado, it's class of 2000.